before we go on this map, um, the idea of 5e combat is actually uh, quite uh, doing it more easily than, uh, or I would say they, they try to do it more and more easily like uh, as they've done in the um, the rule sets before, like 3.5 or so, which was uh, uh, which was very difficult um, in in uh, because you you've had to to see so many numbering and and you need a, almost you needed almost a calculator to do that. You you no longer need that in 5e. Um, what you have here is. Oh, yeah, just just look on your charts. You can. I've I've used just for your information. I've I've used Devon Knights tokens, which I very much like. Um, it's not the regular tokens. The pictures you have at on the portrait that are regular pictures, but your tokens are not. Hope you like them. So um, that said, what you can do in combat is and Monty. I think you know most of it already. Um, but nevertheless, we're going through all of it again. Uh, like I said, every class uh, is still uh, a lesson to, to learn. Okay, so maybe a small refreshment wouldn't be so bad. Okay, what you can do in combat is you can move. Uh, movement is, um, of course, one of the big things uh, you can do. Um, this is only limited by the movement speed you have on your character sheet. You see the movement speed on your character sheet on the main tab. Some of you might have 35 feet movement and others have maybe only 20 or 25 and the regular feet movement for humans, for example, would be 30. Um, you can move at any time during your turn before, after or during actions, which might be difficult to other systems you use. Moving will cost you five feet if you'd like uh, to move five feet. Moving five feet uh, is going one square. Like, uh, for example, if Sinister is, uh, would be moving five feet, you just go one square. Uh, that would be cost five feet of his movement. Um, you can do different types of movement, not just moving. Uh, you can climb, for example. This is more expensive. This is costing you 10 feet per five feet. And this is important because um, it can happen due to circumstances on the map that you need climbing. And if you need climbing, oh, I, I see uh, I'm turning around, something there. <laughs> okay, um, and, and climbing could also mean that you have to uh, do an ability check. This is of course, depending on your DM. You can do swimming and I, I'm not going too much into the details of everything. Otherwise, if you don't tell me, I should, okay? I'm just uh, giving you a small heads up because otherwise we would talk an hour and I don't think that is um, that that would be too boring. I'm very sure of it. Uh, you can uh, climb. That's what I said. You can swim, which is also costing you 10 feet per five feet. And can it can be that you need to uh, need a, an ability check. For example, if you're full uh, armored, that might be useful to uh, do one. Uh, you can drop prone. This is costing you nothing. You simply drop prone onto the ground. You can crawl, which is also costing you 10 feet, so more expensive. You can stand up. After you've, you've gone prone, you have to stand up again, and this is costing you half of your movement speed. If you have 30, you will have to spend 15 feet of movement to stand up. You can do high jumps, or you can do long, long jumps. Um, you can walk over difficult terrain, which is coming from your DM. He's, when you go over a map, you might not see that this is difficult terrain, so the DM will tell you that it is, and this will give you another plus five uh, as a uh, plus five feet as a cost modifier. So if you're crawling with ten feet per five feet costing, um, this will cost you then fifteen feet crawling on difficult terrain, um, and you can grapple move someone then your speed is simply halved. So if you have 30 feet of movement, you can move someone which you've grappled, or who you've grappled actually uh, with 15 feet of movement. Uh, and the best thing of all is you can improvise. And I think that's all the game is actually about. If you have an idea how you, how you uh, want to do something, uh, improvising, uh, improvise what you'd like to do for a movement. Like I jump over him or, or I don't know, just uh, use your ideas, use what you'd like to do and the DM will decide if that is possible or if you need an ability check or whatever. So uh, how much is uh, that is costing you? And that is, I think, what 5e and the game is really about. 
So that's all about movement. Uh, if you have questions, please stop me. Otherwise, we're going to the action. Okay. Uh, actions. Uh, you have one action per turn. The difference between, uh, of turn and round, I'm, we're coming to that later. That might be important. Um, so actions means you can interact with an object or feature, actually with one object or feature of the environment for free. Simply once per turn. Um, an action can be an attack. Of course, melee or range, that doesn't matter, or spell. Oh, which is actually different. So um, an attack is an action, a grapple would be an action. Uh, actually, a special melee attack would be a grapple. Uh, a chove uh, might be interested, interesting, as this is one of uh, the, I would say one of a, a kind of a powerful thing you can do, shoving someone. Uh, is also that's also special melee attack and cost you one action casting a spell um, If the cast time is one action will cost you one action So look on the cast time of your spell, which is very important when you're using a spell because there can be uh, Other other actions are also possible for casting a spells um, dashing This is nothing else than doubling your movement speed it will cost you an action so if you dash, you cannot no longer attack. But then you have, as a 30 feet guy, you then have 60 feet of movement suddenly. You cannot attack, but you can run. Um, disengaging, <coughs> sorry, is an action, um, which means this is preventing you from opportunity attacks if you disengage out of the reach of an opponent. Um, you're in a five feet reach of a goblin, for example, you'd like to go out of that reach. You can do that with a disengage action, and then the goblin would not be able to give you an opportunity attack, which he regularly, regularly would have. Um, nevertheless, it can be that one of your opponents has a trade, a feat, or whatever, which is allowing him that he still can attack you, so this, there's a certain risk remaining. It's up to you uh, to decide if you'd like to take the risk or not. Um, dodging is an action. Uh, escaping. Also, escape actually is an action. Uh, you can use an object, uh, interacting with, with an object or using special abilities, which is an action. You can help someone. If, if you, for example, in combat help someone, uh, an ally, for example, um, who is five feet next to you, then you can grant this ally advantage. That's, uh, that's not only helping uh, in combat, you can also help with an ability check which can be a good thing to do. Many uh, don't know that using a shield, I especially mean equipping or unequipping a shield, um, that is an action too. You can draw a sword, you can change the weapon maybe, but you cannot simply use or equip or unequip a shield without uh, spending an action for that. Walter, well, I have a question. Sure. Um, but if you drop something that's not an action, right? True, because um, we've had this discussion also in the last class, because dropping something, for example, you'd like to use uh, a, a two-handed sword, and right now you have a shield and one sword in your hands, uh, and you simply decide to drop the weapons and the shield and draw your two-handed sword. Um, the idea of that is... Um, um, this wouldn't be an action so far because uh, you have a big drawback as you lose your weapon and your shield in that moment. You cannot simply switch back to the shield and the weapon again. You have to go back to the place where you dropped it and take it up, um, which would be more, uh, um, yeah, which would be not so easy like dropping it. So that's why you can do it without spending an action. Does this, um, uh, is this the answer to your question? Yes, it does. All right. Hiding. <coughs> switching weapons, sorry, uh, continuing on the question. Uh, switching weapons, as in, let's say I have a long sword, I shoot it and I take my crossbow out or something like that, that's a full action. You mean if you do? So not, not, not dropping it, but I put it back yes. on, uh, on myself. Okay. You mean if you if you for example have a, a sword and you just put it into your 
uh, a sheet bag and then use your range wrapper. No, you can do that. Yeah. You can do so that. This is mainly uh, mainly concentrating on the shield. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Because I think idea behind that is um, a bit of uh, a wood set idea behind that is because the shield is quite powerful. Okay. But you can, for example, make a, a, um, a regular attack with your sword and then decide to do a, the next attack as a ranged attack. That wouldn't be a problem. <clears throat> Which includes that you're changing weapon then. Okay. Okay, got it. All right. Uh, hiding is an action. Searching some uh, a room, for example, or a place or whatever would be an action in combat. Uh, using class features uh, are actions. And a very important thing, maybe uh, not many using this uh, or, or even knowing this, you can ready an action, which actually means that you choose a trigger uh, and have to describe that trigger to the DM, of course, also. Um, you decide what perceivable circumstances will trigger your reaction. And then you choose the action you will take uh, in response to the trigger. Um, and that's actually it. And uh, you can, for example, think about uh, if someone opens their door over there and uh, an awful zombie comes out of it, I am preparing to uh, hit him with my fist in the face. You can ready this action until the zombie comes out of that door and then you s suddenly do this action earlier than everyone else could react. Even the zombie would not have a chance to do something because you've readied that action. The problem about that is be very precise on your trigger. Okay. Im one one question. Sure. Uh, uh, reading an action can be done uh, before the combat phase is uh, initiated, so before the initiative uh, is rolled. No, it's an action ready. To ready your action is an action. That means you have to. Uh, it has to be your turn. Ah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. Improvising is also an action. And that may be the most interesting thing again, because just think about what you can do and try to explain how you do that and the DM might uh, approve it. That's all I uh, can tell you about actions. Hope that helps. Um, another thing you need to know is that 5e is also giving you the possibility, a possibility to have a, uh, or to use a bonus action. You have maximum one per turn. And a bonus action, you can only take a bonus action when you have a special ability, a spell or feature, which is stating that you can do something as a bonus action. Regularly, that would be an offense attack, for example, which you can use with, with the attack action. Like one action is the attack action and the bonus action would be your offense attack. It's regular, not so much damage like the, the real attack, but well, you can cast a spell. Just look on your cast time of the spell. If it's stating that is, uh, the cast time is one bonus action, then you can cast that spell as a bonus action. Uh, this is not helping you if you already have, uh, uh, if you already cast the spell during that uh, turn, because casting a spell is only possible once per turn. But you could do something different, uh, for example, with your action and then cast a spell as a bonus action. So this is still a mighty thing. You can use class feature, uh, some features using uh, use bonus actions, and then you can use them also, of course, as a bonus action. Okay, that's about that group. Um, one more to follow, which is the reaction, which would actually be the instance response to a trigger of some kind, like the Reddit action before. Uh, the reaction is actually the instant response to a trigger. Uh, it can occur on your turn, or and that is the difference, uh, also on someone else's turns. Uh, you have maximum one per round, not per turn, but per, per round. The difference here is, um, it's kind of difficult to explain that, but the difference between, between turn and round means actually if you've done an action, a bonus action or whatever during your turn and you then say, okay, the next, um, the next initiative um, 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 uh, would, be, uh, um, would be in the game and has to do his turn, 
then he's doing something, then the next one is doing something, and in the moment when you are, uh, when it's your turn again, then the round um, uh, is, uh, is done. Hopefully that was kind of understandable. Okay, so a reaction, you have maximum one per round, can be, for example, the opportunity attack. Enemy leaves your reach, that is a reaction. Or your readied action, which is then the action which you have readied already, so that is then a reaction. Uh, and the casting a spell. There are spells where you can, uh, where you have a casting time of one, uh, one reaction. <laughs> That's mainly what you can do in combat. I'll give you two more things which might be important in combat, but nothing which you can still do in combat. Uh, that are the conditions. I guess you all know um, most of the conditions already. That's why I just say you have um, things which are altering your capabilities uh, in, a, uh, uh, in a variety of ways. Um, for example, a result of a spell, a class feature, or a result of a monster attack, or other effects, um, like you can be grappled, you can be poisoned, you can be prone, unconscious, restrained, frightened, blinded, uh, exhausted, even invisible, whatever. So uh, that are things which are altering uh, the capabilities of what you can do. And then the last thing I'd give you today would be the env environmental effects. Environmental effects, like um, you have things which can obscure your vision, they can prove uh, a significant hindrance to most of your adventuring task, of course. You can be lightly obscured, heavily obscured, whatever. Uh, or if lightest absence or present, that can be also something which is uh, a problem for you, like bright light to some classes or darkness or dim light. Uh, creatures some creatures have uh, special senses uh, which allow them to perceive uh, the environment better than others which uh, can help you with environmental effects like blind sight, two sight, dark vision. And last thing is obstacles can provide cover during combat like three quarters of cover, full cover, half cover. All right. That's mainly what I wanted to give you today as a heads up on theory. If you don't have any more questions, we could move on with that map. Otherwise, please let me know. Just one fast, just uh, like just to get it clear. So I can use an action as I don't know, like a sword attack, and then a bonus action use a spell, like firebolt or whatever. Only if the spell is stating that uh, you can cast it as a bonus action, then yes. Uh, so if it, it doesn't state that it's a bonus action, it's only one action, right? Yes, if, if for example, this, uh, uh, the casting time of the spell is saying something like, uh, you need a minute, or is saying something like, one action, <clears throat> you can't cast it as a bonus action. Is that okay, so if it, mm -hmm. see it's in instantaneous, it can be a bonus action. No. Instantaneous uh, no. just means that it's simply happening right in the moment when you cast it, but it's still an action. Okay, so if it says casting time one action, that's only an action. Yes, okay. right. Okay. So that's uh, that's uh, very clear stated in the spell's description. Um, casting time, one action, one bonus action, one reaction. That are the three casting times you can get. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay. What I'd like to do now would be, uh, I, you see that I've masked the map, but uh, it's not because I'd like to uh, make exploring today. We won't explore today the map. I'm just opening up completely for you uh, because this map is featuring just one way for you. You can't go uh, somewhere else. Oh, or maybe you're surprising me. Let's see. <laughs> okay, let me delete that awful mask. There you go. Actually, I had a question if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. That's all about questions uh, today. I picked the a cleric hill dwarf, and uh, I noticed that she has a shield. So I was wondering about that. Uh, could I, if an enemy comes up to me and starts meleeing me, can I use a shield to perform like a knockback to make them go back five feet and then 
basically make them do a move action and then another then attack instead of attacking twice is that like possible uh, the point is uh, there could be a feature maybe where you uh where you have the possibility to do things like that but you mean uh, effectively using your shield to knocking him back if you don't have the possi uh, the feature or the feed or the trade or whatever in your character to to do that this wouldn't be possible from the rule side, but I think that is a perfect description which you now give me um, uh, to actually uh, say that is something which you can, for example, improvise. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, I'm doing that because uh, whatever reason, um, um, or actually it's kind of in the point where you say um, you, are, um, you are using, for example, an action to get uh, a dodge or better defenses. That's what you want to do, right? Yeah, it kind of creates space between us and the creature that's attacking me. So yeah, you can. To... I mean, uh, that is that would be the special explanation for doing a shove. And there are classes like a paladin, for example. That's what I remember. I don't know the O's right now or the class type. Uh, I guess shield master is maybe the feat. Someone can correct me here uh, if that's wrong, but. Uh, that is actually bringing you the possibility to use your shield as a bonus action. You can then uh, shove or uh, prone your opponent with your shield. So someone is attacking you and you then say, okay, I'm using, uh, if it's your turn, you can use your shield as a bonus action and can then shove him with your shield actually or hit him with the shield. That's maybe the better description. And this is giving you the possibility to decide if you do a con uh, hitting him with a shield is going with a contestant um, uh, with a contested ability check, like um, you're then rolling on, for example, um, uh, on uh, athletics, a strength check at athletics. Uh, that is then contested by the target strengths. Uh, he can the, uh, the target always can decide if he's using athletics. Uh, if he has it, or strength ability, or dexterity ability, or a skill which is helping him there, and the one who is winning that contested check can then decide um, if if the target is winning, actually nothing happens. What you've tried to do does not work. But if you would win that contest, it would give you the opportunity to move him five feet back, or put him prone where he stands. I guess okay, that's cool. what, what you mean, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So, uh, any more questions, just stop me. And if a fight gets lame for you, uh, please let me, let me know also, because sometimes you have this um, information, uh, situations like um, um, nothing is really happening and you will win the fight and it might be very uh, lame just shooting him out of... Um, uh, whatever reason, then please let me know and tell me that's lame and we go on to the next. Okay. Uh, yo, so you're, you're standing on that map, looking into the eyes of uh, uh, Professor Waldby right in front of you. He's looking at you and saying something like, okay, nice that you made it today. Thank you very much for uh, entering my class. Uh, as you all know, uh, this is on your own risk. Uh, I wish you a lot of luck, but well, not all of you will make it back um, safely um, to your to to home, but well, that's uh, what a combat class should be about, uh, isn't it? And he's laughing, uh, and then he steps back a bit, points with his uh, left uh, arm to the um, to the bridge, and says something like, "Okay, that would be the way I've prepared for you guys. Uh, that is the learning lesson way. Have." a lot of fun prepare your weapons and well just go on maybe you can talk a bit about um uh, with the group members which could be helpful but you don't need to have fun and he goes a little bit back um that's a safer spot right here so um i'm not a student today On Fantasy Grounds, if you'd like to move your character you can simply left click your token and move it um, I've not locked your tokens, um, as this is, I think, um, not really helpful. If you want to talk with the group members and think about a lot small strategy, just do it. If you don't want, fine for me also. Um, 
let's see what it brings. Um, the only thing I'd like to do you um, to you is kind of I've not locked your tokens, but in the moment when I say stop, please don't move it, um, and we see what happens. And don't walk over the other guys. <laughs> like a very unsturdy bridge. Yes, it looks like that. Maybe someone should build Skull to Head. You're really looking a little bit frightened, don't you? So, okay. I would say stop in this moment, please. Don't move your tokens a bit. I give you a... Vertigo, I put you a little bit back. Same with Sinister, because you did a big movement there. Um, all right, on the left and on the right side of your of the bridge, you see the water uh, moving uh, and moving a lot. Some some things seems to come up out of it. Um, uh, waves uh, uh, waves get higher and higher, and they uh, even hit the bridge a bridge where you're standing up, uh, and you see such wild things coming out of the water. They're not looking very, very friendly. And on the um, northern west side, uh, World Bear is hopping like a small child and, and grinning and saying things like, hey, hey looks good, looks good. <laughs> okay, uh, please all of you guys roll initiative right now. On the main tab, the initiative button. Okay, looks like you all already know how to do that. Fine. That brings, if I see it correctly, Sinister, you're the first one. What you'd like to do? So I'm going to move down and south and to the east and attack the control, that guy. Mm -hmm. And where is that at? And I'm going to do an unarmed strike. Oops. Got that sounds one. good. Yeah. And then I single is it single click or double click on the bludgeoning? Um if do you have you have it on uh, you have it I guess it's a single click. I'm not sure about that. Maybe double click if that's working. There it goes. Double click. Yeah, yeah double click, okay. Thank you. Nice. You've hit him in his face, in his watery face. You, you're completely wet right now. <laughs> now, I, I thought monks had a bonus action of, uh, since I did an unarmed strike, I could do a bonus action of another unarmed strike. Uh, as a 4 but I don't see it. Yeah, the point is, um, you're absolutely new, <laughs> a level 1 monk. So, uh, I think not much to do for you. <laughs> okay. Then that would be the end of my turn. And down arrow. And you, you don't have a real weapon, do you? Oh, you have a short sword. Okay, that's wonderful. Okay. So, Damon. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, uh, Sinister, you still can move if you want. Just for your information. I think you know. And um, as you've not used all of your movement. Okay, I think I'm good, though. Okay. All right, I'm just going to stay back and cast my Sacred Flame against the uh, Water Ward tier, uh, target one. Mm -hmm. That's not... Okay, yeah, you hit him. Nice. You see that the save he did was an 11. You have a spell save of DC 13. That's why uh, this might... Um, uh, get you wrong if you read that message it's looking like oh no your spell was a failure no his save was a failure that was 
uh, maybe not the best throw you you could do, right? Okay. <laughs> Just one damn. Okay. Please end your turn. Or you can still move if you want. Yeah, I'll end my turn. 